All right, everybody, looks like we are live. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us again today for Tuesday Healings with Ricardo Sturdivant. Tattooists and artists can join Ricardo once a week to talk about artists in real time. Uh, we can talk about art, collecting, experiences, tech, and more. We are beaming out to several different places. So if you are watching, let us know that our streams are working by either tagging a friend who loves tattoos or letting us know where you're beaming in from. Like I always say, positive reviews are welcome. All of these reinventing network shows, art jams, drawing groups, interviews, panels, and webinars can be watched at reinventing247.com. We have several weekly shows and drawing groups that you guys are welcome to tune into or even hop on the call with us. It's really easy and fun to do. Remember to set reminders for our upcoming events on our YouTube channel, or you can catch us live every Sunday at 1 p.m. We have our Skill Building Sundays with Jason Leeser. This show is great to bring something you're working on, or if you have questions about a design, you can get a straightforward, honest answer in a judgment-free atmosphere. As some of us know, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have our evening evolution class, led by the legendary Guy Aitchison. The first trimester is now underway. If you'd like more information, head over to classrooms.reinventingthetattoo.com to find out more or to check out our new learning platform. Right here, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. is our Tuesday Feelings. Wednesdays at noon is a Tattoo Now show. And Wednesday, uh, Thursdays at noon is a Tattoo Collecting Podcast. <clears throat> Aside from our digital events, there's several upcoming real-world events as well that we're getting ready for. I will be in Chicago this weekend. Ricardo's going to be there as well at the Villain Arts Chicago Tattoo Convention. You can catch all of us in Health City, Columbus, Ohio on May 20th to 22nd. Um, some of our friends over at the Indianapolis Tattoo Expo will be there June 10th to 12th. And of course, we'll be at the Rubber City Tattoo Invitational on July 29th to 31st, Health City in Phoenix, late August. We also will be at Ink Mania doing some reinventing tracks down in Tampa next in uh, June. Before we kick off today with Ricardo, uh, let's just shout, shout out to our sponsors for helping us provide this content to you guys for free. One of my favorites, World Tattoo Events, which is popping this month. There's 48 tattoo conventions in the world in March alone. So worldtattooevents.com has the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events in the world. Also, thank you to Raw Pigments, an ink company that is tapping into the raw pigments with acrylic-free inks that are impressing artists across the globe. Thank you to Tattoo Now, technology for tattooers, which is Gabe's project and has been ongoing for decades. Of course, the founder and inspiration behind reinventing the tattoo is well, Guy Aitchison. You can find Guy's Biomech Encyclopedia, DVDs, machines, paintings, and more at GuyAitchison.com. Also, thank you to Jake at the Fireside Tattoo Network, Amy at the Apprenticeship Diaries, and eco-friendly tattoosflies.com. Throughout this show, we welcome positive comments and reviews on these channels, and if you guys would like, please follow us. To join in this live stream, you can go to reinventingthetattoo.com. Scroll down to our calendar at the bottom of the page, click the event that you'd like to join. And in the event description, you'll see a Zoom link. If you click it, check your video and audio, you're in. If you'd like to host one of these reinventing events or to sponsor our community, send us an email at management at reinventingthetattoo.com. Now I'm gonna pop off into the background. I'll read off comments and I'll have my browser open. Otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and bring in Ricardo. All right, what's hey, up what's Ricardo? Up? <clears throat> Good morning. How's it going? It's going today. Morning, you too. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? I got my coffee. Hey. Cheers. Hey. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's so, it's so funny, man. I have a coffee shop like right down right downstairs from me. It's great, and then like right around the corner, there's now a Starbucks. You know what I mean? But I go to the local one beforehand, and but it sucks sometimes because like you go in to get just a regular coffee with ice, just that's it, and they look at you like, wait what <laughs> like you know you can make that yourself <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah i get that but like i want to just go there get a coffee and then leave you know what i mean but yeah anyways uh, sometimes i'll go to starbucks and get like all the thrills and you know but no just regular coffee and ice and i'm all about it yep but That's um yeah you were talking about <laughs> tattoo conventions you know what i mean yeah. um you are going to go to Chicago this week, and uh, I'm pretty excited to go up there. I actually had a friend text me and ask me if I was working it, and I told him no, but I told him that I'd be seeing him pretty soon, and I can't wait for him to meet you. You're gonna you're gonna freak out about this dude. He's hilarious, man. I've been tattooing yeah, okay. him for I've been tattooing him since the very beginning, since like I think man, '99, 2000. You know what I mean? 
And there's actually a pretty funny story about me and him too. Like I was doing these nautical stars on the fronts of his, of his biceps. And we did the first one, you know what I mean? And of course it took me forever. Cause I'm like super meticulous and super like into it at the whole time. Like just beginning tattooing. And then we started the second one and I'm, I did the outline. I was like, okay, looks good. Started the shading. And then I was like, Oh shit. He goes, wait, what for real? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I put the shading next to each other instead of opposite. You know what I mean? And he was like, no way, dude. I was like, don't sweat it. We're going to fix it. We're going to make it look good. And we'll do the other one too. And he's like, he, he tells me still, like, we'll have to bring that story up because I appreciated you so much because like you didn't bullshit about it. You know what I mean? You didn't like, you didn't like just cut the, the corner and like not tell me or anything like that, dude. He's like, you were straight up and honest about it. And it meant a lot to me. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, so when, whenever people ask me if I ever mess tattoos up or anything like that, like that's usually the story that I'll bring up and they, they laugh their ass off about it. So yeah. Well, like, a good thing it was uh, well received, right? Yeah. Tell me about it. Cause he could have just like punched me or something like what? <laughs> Especially in those days, man, it was a much different environment in the tattoo studio at those days. You know what I mean? And it seems yeah. like so long ago, but it wasn't that, that long ago. Really. So, well, I guess it, it is a while back. It's over 20 years for sure. So what do you know? Uh, but, Josh, um, if you're watching, uh, Josh, if you're watching, he just commented about the Zoom link. I will get that updated on the calendar now. Okay. You know, I've been getting a lot of feedback from Instagram and stuff like that. I've been um, seeing some people post uh, some drawings that they've been doing using some of the methods that I was showing with some of the charcoal and stuff like that. And um, that's pretty cool. I got to tell you guys, thank you so much. Um, for all the messages that you send me, you know, Medusa had sent me um, a picture and stuff like that a little while back. And that was awesome of her to do that too. Uh, I love seeing people's art progress. And I like, I can't thank you enough for the kind words that, that make me feel like there's actually, this is actually making an impact. You know, like we've been doing this for a little over a year now. Uh, and it was super frightening at first, you know what I mean? But with your help, Lauren, and your assistance, it has helped, it's helped me out so much. You know what I mean? Gabe's insight, uh, Jason's hand in it as well. It's been awesome. But just to get those kinds of messages and stuff from you guys, man, and you guys to be involved and talking and chatting in the chat rooms and stuff like that, or jumping in the Zoom links, it's great. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. It's, it's different, um, right? I mean, this is what episode number 37 you know? Wow, dude. Yeah. So crazy. it's something that I really look forward to. And it's weird because normally I just stay off in the background, but I think it's kind of evolved into something where we hang out and all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and welcome Josh Johnson into the room. <laughs> Good morning, Josh. He's just getting connected now. Sweet. Sweet. Always good to see you, Josh. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. Right on. How are you all today? Doing pretty well. Doing you got your internet fixed, I see. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big maybe. Um, so we we have a, a rural internet connection or ISP. Um, so they sort of have a monopoly, and I have no choice but to use this particular ISP. So. Uh, uh they have no incentive or pressure to actually fix our internet. They did send a technician out, but we were having the same issues the next day. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. You know, I lived in a, I lived in a smaller town for a long time, dude. There's like 10,000 people and it was the same thing there. I think, I think it's called like a general monopoly or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sucks. It's like the monopoly idea is illegal, but general monopoly, that's a whole nother thing. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> If you just move to a smaller town, create something like that, and you're banked, bro. Like, you know? <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's not that's a horrible idea. You're well, right. Tell me about it. Maybe you should start your own network, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's. I would if, mm -hmm. if uh, I had several million dollars for infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha. I mean, that's no big deal. Just play the lottery, dude. You're good to go. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. No, I gotta compliment your setup. I like it. It looks super clean in your environment, man. It looks um, it looks awesome. Like the the the, the, the picture, the quality of your picture is great, dude. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, and the tone Actually, of it is also really nice. <laughs> well, I'm one of the AV geeks from high school, so I've got uh, DSLR, 
with too much what technology. Are you, are you running through a black magic or what are you um, just curious? Uh, no, I, I actually don't need black magic now because Canon released their EOS webcam utility. So you can just US bring your Canon camera straight. Oh, to shit. Yeah. Really? That's awesome. That's part of the reason I've stopped using so many of the other platforms is because like, dude, it's so hard to get the uh, EOS going sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't even detect it. And it's like, dude, it's connected. I've disconnected it and reconnected it. I turned it on. I turned it off and it's still not working. What the hell? So this one, you yeah. just plug straight in with the USB and that's it. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's sort of an older Canon too. It's a T5i. So it's nothing super fancy or special. Like the best part about it is the lens and I got a Sigma lens. So it's nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm. I'm I have a Canon sitting right over there on my desk right now. It's just sitting there because it's like I take pictures for tattoos with it, and I, I want to use it for digital video and stuff like that. But I have so many issues connecting with this uh, with Minicam or something like that. You know what I mean? Or yeah. even what was the other one that you were recommending to me, Lauren, for a while? Oh, the free software is OBS or Wirecast. OBS, but OBS yeah. is, I would say, problematic at least for me. Jason. No. Frank. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's super problematic for me. I'm just like looking at it like, am I reading Greek here or something? Or what, what am I reading? I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I actually use OBS for um, for this. So it's it's still the Canon. Oh, exactly. Can right on. But, but it's sure. just, uh, See, I, I like God, when you pulled but, that up last week. It looks really cool. The, the OBS, if for anybody watching, is... Uh, a broadcasting service where you are able to kind of create scenes and switch between them. So it's really useful if you're doing any sort of, you know, educational content or anything like that. Yeah. Cause it's, it's nice to be able to switch back and forth from one camera to another. Um, and it's also as, as, uh, you know, cliche as it might seem, it's really cool to be able to see a person's face while they're working on a project and stuff like that as well. I think we're so used to like, looking at people while we're conversating, you know what I mean? So to not have their face there sometimes seems like kind of, you know, um, I don't know, opposite of what it is that it's trying to do, like transfer information, you know what I mean? So like to have Josh's picture of his vulture that he's working on and then be able to have like a little mini camera, right? Yeah, you got it. Go ahead and yeah, say something. Yeah. Let's right. go ahead and right spotlight there. you so everybody can kind of there see. Let me okay. uh, do this so everyone can kind of see what it looks like for you. Well, this, yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah, this right here is actually Perfect. the entire reason I set up that camera over there because, as you can see, I'm genetically gifted with with the bald. So if I were to do this while I'm drawing, all, all you see is a big cue ball, and uh, I was like, "All right, all right, we we gotta we gotta do something else." So my profile is a little tiny bit sexier, just a tiny bit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> We'd call it aerodynamic. Hey, and plus we get to see your tat the tattoo on your neck. So yeah, yeah. that helps. Who who uh who's working on your neck? Uh it was my old shop owner, actually. He uh he started it and um uh the Okay. Is he freezing up? Looks like yeah. the um <clears throat> looks like the, the country <clears throat> internet is kicking in again. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so uh, before he hops back on, Ricardo, uh, you want to tell us kind of what you're working on in the background? Yeah, um, I've been working on this oil painting for the past couple of days. Uh, and I had this idea for a mother-son kind of embracing thing. I don't know if you can see it up here. I'm, I'm realizing now that when I'm looking at it, make the camera. Oh, there you go. Hey, Josh. I think it's like uh, it's kind of just trying to catch up. It's like almost buffering or something, isn't it? Sure. But um, yeah. So what we're working on is right today. What I'm going to do, though, uh, I, I liked where it was going when I was like sitting up close on it. Um, but I'm sitting back and looking at the thing as a whole now. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and paint over what's already here. Uh, I think it. I think this, as far as subject matter, needs to be a lot larger to kind of capture the whole essence of it. So I'm gonna move the face down here a little bit more and then the mother's face a little bit more centered. Uh, that way the shoulder can kind of or curve into the side of the profile of the face here, that three quarter profile. And I really liked the idea of going ahead and starting over on this portion of it, um, just because I wanted to show 
more or less the way I look at paintings or just life in general is like, you know, you get so far and you think, you know, where you're going with it sometimes. And sometimes it's okay to just start it all over. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if any of you guys feel like that whenever you're working on your pieces, but I know that for me, it's created a lot of anxiety in my, in my past. Like, Oh my God, it's gotta be so perfect right away. But it really doesn't. Nothing really has to be that perfect. Nothing really is that perfect. So we're going to go ahead and just paint right over it. I'm just going to wipe it down. Um, normally I would just kind of, I think I got some mineral spirits on here right now. So I'm going to kind of wipe it down first to get a lot of the excess blacks off. I'm just going to smear it up. Um, the whole idea is to have this idea of perception in this piece. So it's kind of ironic that we're doing this right now. Uh, it's going to read perceive once it's all done. So, there we go. Um, finished. And I'm not freaking out about it either. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm not going to like lose sleep over it anymore. We're just going to keep on moving forward, man. But Lauren, uh, earlier we were talking about the conventions and stuff like that. And um, a lot of the times, I got to be honest with you, some of the things that I've done in the past is avoid things like that, like gatherings and stuff, especially of my peers, you know. And um, I think we had talked before about like meeting people and like being so nervous about these people that we look up to, like as far as our peers and stuff like that go. And I know that it, it's fun because you and I have attended a, a convention together down in, in Texas that you invited me to, which was awesome. And I met, met so many cool people down there. So I thank you for that. But like, um, I think we had talked about like just getting to know who you are, right? And not being afraid to kind of like go out to people and just say hello to them and stuff like that. Um, yeah one of the things school. one of the things I've been working on like personally you know I go to conventions all the time I've been to quite a few um, <clears throat> and usually the mentality is to focus on everybody there and that usually results in kind of being overwhelmed so for me in my personal <clears throat> stance is to worry about every single one you know and I started doing that in Philadelphia and I, I felt like a, a, a shift in my perception where I would talk to a much wider, like I would talk to anybody and it was much more rewarding rather than focusing on <clears throat> really, you know, either impressing or making connections with everybody. I was more or less focused and try to treasure each personal one-on-one -on -one interaction. And so that helped right. me quite a bit rather than, you know, oh, this person's here or this person's here that I really look up to rather than right. really valuing every single one-on-one -on -one connection that you have, you know, and that's kind of broad, but something that I've been personally focusing on. No, I like that idea because like we're so enamored sometimes with the idea of what we think this person is, you know what I mean? And I, it's, it's one of those things that I've, I've talked about and I've, I've felt for such a long time is that um, like you said, the perception thing, you know, like a lot of the times your your the anxiety that you have to go up and talk to this person is because the idea that you've built up of them before you even meet them. You know, and like I've come to realize that it's as easy as just you realizing that somebody wants to say hello to you. Like you just go to them and say hi. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we fight ourselves for so long because we're so afraid to talk to these people because, oh, man, they're so awesome. They're never going to want to talk to me. You know what I mean? Or, or they have no idea who, who I am. And you're right. Maybe they don't. But the craziest part is whenever they go, oh, man, I've seen some of your work. <laughs> And it fucking throws you for a curve, you know what I mean? Because like, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And I, I agree with you where it is okay to just walk up to everybody and just say hello. Um, and I love it too. And uh, it's opened a lot of doors for me. And I think that's the one thing that we, as people always want to have happen is like these opportunities, but that's your opportunity right there. You know, and we, we fight it so, so much. I mean, when you so come much. from a, a good place and you're not coming uh, from a place of asking for something in return and it's just a general uh, type of conversation, I think it's usually across the board quite appreciated. You know, like going yeah, up exactly. to Bob Tyrell and saying hello or going up to BJ Betts, hello. They, they, they've they seen it all and they can kind of tell yep. just by the way you conversate where what type of place you're coming from. Right. 
Right. Like if you're just there to be human first, right? Just be like, hey, what's up, man? How's it going? I really look up to you. I like this. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I dig your work. I've liked your work for a long time. Because that's that's actually what it is that you're thinking the whole time anyway, isn't it? It's like you like this person's work. So instead of just like making them this idea of what you think they are, just go to them and compliment them exactly what it is that you are so nervous to talk to them about their work. I like your work. dude. You're right, Lauren. That's exactly it, man. Like be human about it. Um, I think it will take you a long way just being honest and sincere, and especially if you're nervous to say something to them. You could even kind of say that. I mean, you don't have to make it all about that. You can be like, man, I've been so nervous to come up and talk to you, dude. I'm so glad that we're here. I'm glad, glad to meet you. Your work is awesome. Uh, yep. Don't think I'm fanboying too hard because I don't want to. Just call it um, for what it is at the moment. Yeah, and also I do want to invite or uh, welcome Allie into the group if you didn't know. Allie, thank you for joining today. Hey, thanks for having me. Definitely. Great to see what you. What up, Allie? How's it going? It's going good, Ricardo. I love the painting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We just started over, so to speak. So I'm excited to get back into it. What are you working on today? I'm working on this vulture that we started last night with Guy. And uh, oh, nice. The concept is contrast um mm -hmm. and so i'm just kind of trying to figure out my darks and lights right now and decide where we're going to go from there it looks really good you know like one of the things with the contrast um exercise is it's pretty interesting when you think about it because uh, what you're trying to do is create silhouettes right um you're almost trying to create an interesting silhouette so like the vulture is awesome because it's got a lot of interesting angles and things like that and it's very recognizable it's almost like as simple as the, the silhouette of a circle or a square like right away you know it's some kind of bird you know right and you can almost tell that it's like, like that scavenger kind of look to it like we all associate with that shape like if you just look at it you squint your eyes at them you can tell right away it's some kind of like predator or like a you know like the scavenger bird but it's cool because you're really accomplishing that right now you know like you have all the real darks and stuff like that in the foreground and i think I think it looks awesome. I think the only thing that might be missing a little bit is like some mid-tone value. So gotcha. that that's one of the things that I've struggled with on mine too, is like creating the idea of black, mid-tone, and like a light, the lightest tone there is, you know? Right. So yeah, but it looks really cool. I like your concept. We You incorporated the branch and stuff like that, and you're incorporating those bones and everything like that into it too. That's, that's a lot of fun. It's radical. Yeah. I kind of like the erratic nature of what's going on up here at the top of the design and like the controlled chaos at the bottom. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, That's really I cool. like difference. And then the, they went over so many different um, incredible animal statistics with vultures last night. I kind of got lost in that and uh, not yeah. so focused on my drawing. So I'm catching up today. <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so have you so this is your first time doing the class and stuff like that with uh guy right so like, i kind of got um, last year um and then this year you know first time actually going through the course the way that they have it now mm -hmm. and it's okay. been a lot of fun it is isn't it challenging it's educational it's a blast <laughs> yep. meeting all the people in there yeah you know the, the thing that tripped me out the most was how approachable guy actually really is you know what i mean true story yeah because um, like i was talking about before you know like i've i've held i've held him in such high regard i've seen him at conventions and stuff like that and i've always kind of fanboyed over him just like hey what's up how's it going you know and then just walk away real quick like giggling right. the whole time you know what i mean but <laughs> yeah no he's a he's like and, and like to be in the classes with him and for him to offer that critique and that insight is it's just incredible to me i still trip out about it every time i'm on there but he's such such a he's such an easy to talk to dude and like very constructive with his criticisms and stuff like that you know what i mean so that's awesome or his critiques i'm sorry i shouldn't say criticisms but i was so that's cool say, man i was just gonna say because uh you know i jumped in while you guys were talking about you know talking with other artists and stuff and i was feeling very called out 
Um, you know, and because it is one of those things where, you know, uh, I find myself getting intimidated by other artists and, you know, I'm trying to use this as a platform to come through and be a little more brave and brazen and um, a little bit more confident in my own work. You know, and, yes. And getting critiqued by a guy is, you know, that's one of those things that 17 years ago, I didn't think would ever happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Tell me about it. I know exactly how you feel. Isn't that incredible? It is incredible. And now it's like, hey, you know, he knows my name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, he's looking yeah, at you my know, work. And, he, and, mm -hmm. it's, and he's it's, actually critiqued it and you're like learning from it and stuff, dude. Yeah. It's so, um, it's, it's, you know, it's like getting to have a tattoo seminar on the fly this whole thing has been for me and I really enjoy that you I think know, it's like really I nice it. Allie that you're um recognizing the things that you want to accomplish that aren't necessarily exactly what the goals are of the trimester courses and stuff like that yes but that, yes the recognizing those things is you know half the battle and the other half is tackling them head on so I'm just I'm happy to hear that things are going well for you and 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 all that good stuff and that you're involved it's really cool because you might have a different story next year when you've you know tackled those things that you've recognized and you know and we're on to bigger and better things right yep <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what ali that's actually what i wanted to say is that like um it's it's really cool that you are mentioning these things like the um the approachability of all of it right like you're actually using this and it's actually teaching you how to be a little bit more approachable with the scenario you know what i mean and that, it, it, there's a really cool element sometimes about being in your own environment, being in your own home on the video calls and stuff like that, and be able to use that as kind of a buffer, so to speak, yeah. to be able to enter into that discomfort. You know what I mean? So it is cool as hell. And that's definitely one of the things that that's, I've re I can relate to you entirely. And I talk to people about that a lot, which is, you know, jump in on the calls, man. Like, don't be afraid. You know what I mean? Um, I was so nervous at first and it's helped me out a lot. And it actually, I think, the coolest part is having the instruction from Guy, having the direction from Guy, having the critiques from Guy, and the rest of the group when they chime in and they compliment your work as well. Uh, and then the way that that can affect your artwork, the way that it can affect your approach to your own artwork even, because I think there's a barrier sometimes that we have to cross ourselves in order to kind of get off of the plateau that we might feel that we're on, you know, because um, I spoke with Jason and Bruno and Kier and a lot of other artists on here, and we all mentioned the same kind of thing where when we jumped in, when we joined, we were looking for something else. There was something missing. There was something that we felt like we needed to do, you know, and then when you get on this class, there's so many little facets that kind of make them self-evident. And that's, those are definitely some of them is that discomfort for sure. So cheers to you because I love hearing that. It takes something to really get out of that headspace, doesn't it? You it know? does. Yeah, it does because it's all it's all like it's all imaginary, you know. Like we make it up in our own head, and it's pretty oh, incredible good. when you. Yeah, we make it up in our own head, and then when you're part of a bigger group that feels the same way, it just makes it more evident that that's the case. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you. I think you said it. You know, everybody kind of started where we are in this feeling of inadequacy or you know imposter syndrome or you know it's like you know all of us have been there at some point and so to be able to come together and and you know I like the small group aspect uh, uh, where we do get to chime in on each other's pieces on the discussion boards and um you know, knowing that you're going to see the same people in through those course, it really helps make me feel more comfortable about it. You know, I get to grow and learn and connect and make relationships with these people that I wouldn't otherwise know. Yes, entirely. The relationship part is important too. And because it actually does happen, you know, like my son, my son is 21. My, my other child is turning 22 today. And um, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible because uh, for a long time they would be on, you know, on video games and stuff like that and meeting these people from around the world and around the country and stuff like that. And they, they ended up, you know, getting together a couple of times and some of them flew into Illinois and they hung out for like a week, you know, it's like, man, it's so incredible. Like I, I didn't, 
I didn't hold that in such high regard or, or, or have the full capabilities of understanding it entirely until I started doing it myself, like flying to these other places like Philadelphia first with Jason, you know, Miami with Bruno, you know, Texas with Lauren, Massachusetts with Gabe. And you know what I mean? And like to meet them face to face and stuff like that, after we've been talking for so long, there was like, it just felt even more comfortable and even more natural. So it's awesome because the relationships are very real. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at the paradise, man, meeting everybody there, oh, that was incredible. And like to have everybody all in one room at one time was just amazing. So I yes, it. I agree. Yeah, you should you should definitely make it out sometime. It's fun. Definitely try. Yeah. And I I have uh, two younger children, so sometimes it travels a little tricky at this stage. <laughs> yeah, how old, how old are they? If you don't mind me asking. I have a thirteen year old daughter and a six year old daughter. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm popping in here. I just uh, joined. Um, hey, but when you're talking about kids, man, sl slow it down. Take your time. It'll be over. Oh, no, it won't be over, but they'll be out of the house before you know it. And uh, then you'll be yeah, wishing you had less time to work on stuff. Uh, yep. Anyways, how is everybody? Yeah. I, I agree with you, Gabe. It's pretty, it's like a weird kind of thing, isn't it? It's like, oh, man, I can't wait till they get out. And then they get out and you're like, oh, man, you can come on back if I, you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I never, uh, I was never pushing her out, but uh, yeah, the other day I was just like, uh, it, was, it was fucking horrifying. She's been gone for about a uh, first year of college, so almost a year. And, uh, but anyways, yes, more, more time to work, but take the time now to, to enjoy the kids while they're there, because uh, that should just fly by. Absolutely. Most important. Yep, absolutely. Hey, Dave, I just heard you jump in. How are you doing today? Fantastic. How are you? Ah, doing pretty well. I'm excited. It's Tuesday. Woo. Yeah. That's Tuesday. And Jason, <laughs> good to see you this morning. You're the, the savior of my life, as always. Oh, I am not. Don't even try to lie to me about that. You did do the ultimate hookup for me yesterday. I appreciate it quite a bit. Well, because I went and picked up a package? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. That's what friends do. A package. Yeah, no, we, like literally a big cardboard box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we left a, a package at our hotel from the Philadelphia Tattoo Convention. I mean, I didn't pick up a package that's filled with anything that I might want. No, of course. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> All the things. Josh, welcome back. Uh, also, if I don't, it, I'm going to spotlight your video while you have it here because we looked at Allie's. Can we um, talk about your vulture a little bit? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, Hi, Josh. What's up, Jason? Hey, Gabe. Hey, how are you? Hey, Jason, real quick, if you're doing the dishes, can you like mute mute, mute your mic until you're uh, talking? Cheers. All right. Uh, I just started this uh, like right before the call. I did the four thumbnails and got rid of all of the ones that I wasn't enjoying and now I'm just trying to figure out a good frame that contrasts with the stiff vulture I was like yeah filigree frame might work to to drop off the the bottom um especially if we keep it simple and then add something to the background uh yeah yeah I don't know <laughs> this is where we're at I like the flow of it I like the feel of it um, it's got an, uh, a lot of interesting intersecting angles with the, the back end of the bird being straight up and down. Uh, it helps with the gravity of it for sure, like the weight of it, you know what I mean? And I, I kind of like right now the way that the, uh, the, the neck is complementing what it is that you have crossing over the whole image or behind it even. Yeah, I really like the, the neck on this one, how it seems to mm -hmm. fold in on itself. Um, mm -hmm. So I just pushed those S curves on on the really stiff vulture up here and yeah, uh, trying to get a lot of diagonals going through it to make it feel a little more dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's always crucial, man. I, I've talked to people about that a lot is uh, those intersecting angles and triangles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it works, man. It, it makes the things interesting for sure. Strong composition. So do you have any idea what you might do with that, that background? No. Turn it into not, some texture or something like that? Or? 
Not yet. Um, which is the whole point of the exercise. So I need to figure something out. Um, I mean, when it comes to the contrasts in it, though, I mean, it's a very dark bird. So I'm thinking going very light with the background, but it still needs something. I just don't know what. Um, drawing a blank right now. Was yeah, it's, it's hard. Going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sucks, man. Last night was the first good night of sleep that I've gotten in a while, so I apologize for that. That sucks. I listened to I listened to a white noise out for the first time last night. It was great. Oh, nice. <laughs> I played the ocean all night and woke up and thinking that I was by the water a couple of times. It's crazy. It actually tricked me. I was going to say, I thought you were putting on uh, Morrissey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like white noise. Hand in glove. Hand in glove, man. <laughs> no. No, it's cool. Yeah, no. Uh, you know, I, I saw some pretty cool um, subject matter last night, I think. Uh, sometimes it's good to just kind of put it in its own setting. You know what I mean? Like um, a desert kind of scene and stuff like that and try to make it interesting with some of the other things like a, maybe a, a wagon or something like that or like some kind of, you know, caravan. With, uh, I was uh, thinking of something, something wounded trying to wait to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think somebody had the cow skull in one, and it reminded me of. Guy was talking to last night about how it always reminded him of that. So every time he sees a vulture, the cartoon vulture from the from the Looney Tunes, and it was always pretty funny because I remember Bugs Bunny always peeking through the the cow skull eyes, like his eyes always moving around. You know, it's hilarious. So I actually thought about doing that, but I'm not going to. I should leave it. I can show you mine, but mine's on the uh, iPad that I'm using to stream right now. So maybe I'll show you guys a little bit later. But um, yeah. Carter, did you have? You said you had your exercise from last night on the iPad. Yeah, and that's what I'm using to stream gotcha. the uh, Zoom call right now. Yeah. Gotcha. I would love to see. show what I started. Actually, oh, by I the way, welcome, Medusa. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy to see you today. Uh, I woke up to my dog. Uh, uh, barking about needing to go out and I looked at my watch and I was all like but I need to go to class and so you just wait bummer yeah she can she can wait she can deal with it I'd love to show I got carried away last night with the vulture thing um I the vomiting aspect and at some point I think I forgot what the assignment was oh crap but I would love to show you what I did. Let's let's see what you got. Let's see, show us what you got. So we were talking about cows and stuff too. So here's his culture. He says, "Step off, biatch," and he's kicking. Awesome. <laughs> he's kicking at the cows because for some reason we mentioned cows and vultures at some point. But yeah. This is my um, not assignment. So <laughs> I might continue Pretty working good. on this. And if I upload it, I'll just hashtag, uh, hashtag, I didn't follow the assignment. Guy, don't look at this. <laughs> I can already hear a guy going, okay, well. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. Well, like I said before, um, my college art teacher said, if I get bored of an assignment, add an element to it to make me excited about it again. And it turns out defense vomit is, 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 is the way to go. So. Nice. Nice. Well. You know what? On that note, I'm going to show mine on my iPhone, okay? Let me see if I can get it in the screen here. Uh, there we go. Oh, that's looking so good. Yeah. Very nice. I might, yeah, it's awesome. I think I need to play with the, uh, the second head and the body of the second head a little bit more. Because right now it just looks, it looks like a, what is that? Oh man, that movie Total Recall. Those things come out of the, the stomach. Remember that? Oh yeah. 
Mm. Oh, I'm just thinking about the stripper in Total Recall. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> you made me wish <laughs> I had three hands. <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Um, I'm still trying to figure out. Like, I got the darker silhouette in the foreground. I'm gonna play around with some more darks up in the uh, the tiers of the feathers because I noticed that they have like a dark front and then the mid tone in the middle and then it would be lighter towards the bottom. So I have to play here on with that here, make a stronger outline for the whole piece, and then concentrate on setting more mid tone and some of the clouds and then do a lighter wash throughout the whole thing. And I think that'll be a good way to show that contrast that guy wanted us to do, which is, I, I focus on that a lot with my like my charcoal drawings and a lot of these other paintings and stuff like that, which is trying to implement just three basic tones and kind of branch off that a little bit, deviate from it just little bits here and there, like subtleties, especially when it comes to highlights. Uh, you put the highlights closer to those darker contrast and tones and it really sells the idea that it's dimensional, right? So. We'll focus on that a little bit later today. I have the day off today, so I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, somebody bailed on me last minute, and that's okay with me. I used to get so upset about it, man, but now I look forward, not look forward to it, but it's not a bad deal to uh, to catch up on some other things. So I've been setting my day by a, a couple hours at a time so I can try to accomplish as much as I can for stuff that I've been putting off for a while. So that helps out a lot. And one of them was this class and look so forward to it in the morning and this painting. What about you guys? What do you guys do whenever you get blow off days? Do you guys get upset? Do you guys get uh, like all been out of shape about it or what do you, how, what's your approach? I feel like everybody in my shop has a completely different approach to it. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it depends on uh, like as far as clients, no calling, no showing, or deciding to cancel last second or something, uh, mm -hmm. my reaction always depends on what the project was. Like, if it's something I'm super pumped to do, I'll be bummed because I would rather have done that tattoo. But if it's something that I can just be all like, well, I got the design done, I can throw it in my flash book. I'll just be like, yeah, I got the deposit and I'm just going to start working on my homework. Um, I've been utilizing any uh, free opportunities lately to catch up on reinventing, reading uh, the chapters in the canon and with this uh, whole, um, all these exercises and all the videos up on the um, on this new course thing and I've been bringing my headphones to work so I've been utilizing all of every opportunity to soak up as much information I can and I think that's, awesome. that's been helping me take a much more positive approach to suddenly not having an appointment because I can still utilize that time um, proactively um, and like at the shop to do work related stuff. But now that I've got reinventing as like a backup of what I can do with my spare time, it's a uh, it's really uplifted my attitude because I feel like, yeah, I'm still doing work related stuff. I'm still learning. I'm still engaging in art. So, yeah, it makes me feel a lot better than previously when I would just mope around and be all like, well, man, why did they blow me off? Does it mean I'm not a good artist? And then let it get to my exactly. Side. Yeah. There's another, there's another, you know, another reference to the fact that like just because you're signing up for an art class doesn't mean that there's not other benefits to it as well. Like the self-confidence thing is great because like you are, you are making that choice to stay positive, to stay uh, proactive about it and stuff like that, and using the opportunity to its most, um, the, the, the biggest potential you can, and it's educating yourself, and that's awesome, man. That's so cool to hear. Yeah, it's very no, motivating. I I just meant. Yeah, I've I found, yeah, utilizing the free time I have at work to um, whatever anything like that happens uh, to focus all of that towards reinventing or even towards continued education. Like if I find that I have a half an unexpected half hour gap, I'll go to the back room and I'll search YouTube videos of like tattoo time lapse and I'll take a snack break and just watch people tattooing instead of letting it get to my head. And uh, um, yeah, it's actually 
turned into me being one of the least experienced people in the shop. And now other people in the shop are like, yo, Medusa, what do you think about blah, blah, blah. And I'm all like, just because I'm taking an art class doesn't mean I know everything, but I'll help. <laughs> well, I, I think you touched on an important point there, Medusa. Sorry to just kind of jump in and chime in. But no what way, you're man, doing is on. you're constantly adding value to who you are and what yes. you know. Right? Preach, brother, preach. The, the more that you learn, the more knowledge that you acquire. And I mean, still to this day, I go back through whenever I get a no call or a no show, and I read back through chapters as well. Why? Because I always found that reinventing the tattoo always helped me better myself in my artwork. What yeah. that's doing is that's adding value to what you say, right? That's why people are coming to you saying, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Um, you know, uh, I think that this is missing something. What do you think? That's because they're placing more value on what you're saying and what your opinion is because you're reinvesting into yourself. Yeah, I have noticed like uh, when we were doing fit and flow, what I learned through reinventing that week, I was, I mean, I guess I was projecting at work because I'm trying to utilize every chapter into every facet and everything. And I started using the new vocabulary with my coworkers. So I've been like, they've been asking me for more critiques on their tattoos because suddenly I'm walking around the shop with new vocabulary. And it's very fun because now I get to like, I get to help them the way that you guys help me. And it all Dude, goes around. Exactly it. It's all full circle, right? The yeah. circle of life. <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of the that. things that we, isn't it a great movie? I love that movie. But <laughs> um, Jason and I actually talked about this when we first met. Um, I struggled tremendously with the vocabulary um, and it made me feel like I wasn't sure exactly what it was that I was doing you know I was implementing all all of the the, um, the education I was imp implementing the right the right way of doing things but I was not able to to vocabulize or, or use the right words in order to express what it was that I was trying to accomplish is what I'm trying to get at so like you know just as simple as tonal value you know, when I was trying to explain that to Jason one time, he just kind of like looked at me and was like, um, you lost me at the first couple of words in your sentence and you've been talking for the past <laughs> half hour and I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so like, you're right, because like it actually has helped me in this process in order to be able to like push my art to the next level, you know, just by understanding what it is that you're doing and being able to use the right phrase or use the right vocabulary with other artists around you in order to be able to like, uh, ingest a little bit more and get a little bit more out of your environment um what do you think jason i completely agree i think words are power yeah you know there there is power there is weight and there is value within what you said and it doesn't matter who yeah. you are where you come from what you know or what you're talking about there is power and value to what you say so if you're going to talk about something know about it know the right terms Right. And that's what I think is a very um, beneficial thing for a lot of artists out there to know the difference between chroma and yeah. hue, right? Or tone and value, right? These are all major differences with the way that things can look. But if you don't know what those terms mean, how are you going to ever express to someone else, like, they might turn around and say, oh, Ricardo, I really like the value that you're using for the background in that painting. Um, you know, I think that was a really wise decision, even though it's not quite at, you know, either end of the spectrum just yet. Uh, mm -hmm. But if they don't know what value means, then how are they going to get anything beneficial out of that? I have a very fun story about value. Let's hear it. I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's very fun. To me, it's kind of funny looking back on it. The first time someone tried to explain what value was to me, I tried to argue with them because yeah. I had it in my head that value means worth or is equivalent to uh, like a monetary construct. Um, oh, like value. Okay. What is it? 
it's worth it's $85 you know um there's this really amazing artist that I absolutely adore he goes by bat dog on Instagram love his stuff um we used to chit chat a lot about art in the day and he would always give me really healthy critiques and um and then oh my god one day I he tried to explain what value was to me and I tried to argue with him that what he meant to say must have been different shades of color because value means how much something is worth and I was being such a brat looking back on him like wow I'm very very awful but uh, um yeah it took me quite a second to understand that he was actually saying an art term I thought he really was just like saying the wrong word yeah I guess it's not that funny but um no 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 it, it's actually pretty funny because that's what I talk about a lot when you says like perspective you know what I mean and like um, at the beginning of this for me, uh, I was, I had been fighting myself for such a long time as far as taking criticism or being able to put myself out there enough to be able to have criticism given to me, like critique, you know what I mean? And that stunted me for a long time. And it's as simple as you giving us that true story. So thank you for sharing that with us, first of all, and like being able to say, yeah, I had an entirely different perspective than this person gave me so much so that I argued it. And sometimes we don't even realize that we are making an argumentative statement and it keeps you from being able to connect and it keeps you from being able to move forward as far as interpreting something a little bit different than what we perceive. You know what I mean? So it's not. Sorry. I'm sorry. It yeah. does not. <laughs> yeah. I go, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Can we stop, please? <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. So it's really cool that you that you can say that and that you can do that, you know, because that's exactly where I was coming from. That's what I was saying to Jason and what we were talking about, which is, yeah, man, criticism and critique was so, so scary for me because I there's this attachment to vulnerability that I had with like my work. You know what I mean? And I think all of us in the Zoom and maybe a lot of us in there and that are listening in on the chat or listening to this in the future, um, we put so much of ourself into our work that you are so afraid of being vulnerable to somebody going, yeah, you know what? That kind of sucks. Maybe you should start all over or let me add a little bit more to it. And it's so easy to just take that personally. You know what I mean? So if you can detach yourself from that then and open yourself up to it, then get ready to grow. You know, like I've taken some critiques from Gabe, from Guy, and it's been so beneficial. So it's awesome. Jason, you've helped me out so much. It's incredible, man. It's incredible. What do you think? Yeah, it's when you open yourself up to critiques, the only thing you're going to do is get better. You know? And to touch on what you guys were talking about earlier, because I was listening in earlier as I was still becoming conscious of being alive. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was a late night. OK, we'll leave it there. And it was a really rough morning. You guys know what that's like. So um, I have no idea. But uh, to touch on what you guys were talking about as far as networking goes and stuff like that, um, oh, you yeah. know, it's the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Oh, shit. Look at you. Yeah, does it really right. start with the step or does it start with the thought to take the step? Well, for me, it started with falling down. Ooh, that's a better yeah. idea. That's a, that's a really, that's really good. good. What if the step's in the wrong direction? It's there really is it's going a thousand miles the other way. Yeah, well, you a thousand miles start, then, or do you actually start when you get back to backwards. your uh, base point and go forward? <laughs> the question is, would you walk five thousand miles, or would you walk? And I would walk five thousand more. <laughs> yeah. I think if you walk far enough in one direction, you're still going to end up in the spot you started. Because, believe it or not, the planet is round. <gasps> yeah. There you go. <gasps> Boom, <laughs> man. <laughs> You just melted my freaking brain, dude. My I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan alone. had somebody on that said it was flat. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know what? You're gonna fall off. So who cares? Yeah, we all we all get to that point, right? The, the clearing at the end of the path. But we, we fall in. It, 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 it eats us. Yeah, we we'll just go back. No, I think that's cool. I think it's it's good to. It's an interesting point to bring up because I don't think 
that there is a wrong direction. I think yeah. it's all interpretive. You know what I mean? I don't uh, think there is any wrong direction. I think that things yeah. come up. I think things can happen and we think that they suck and they, they're hard and they're terrible. But at the end of it, man, it's all on how you want to like see it. And it's all on how you want to feel about it. Because just uh, because somebody does something to you, because people do things to you all the time. I've had a lot of things taken away from me too. And like, it's hard and it's been hard. The past four years have been, been just a game changer for me. I'm an entirely different person at the end of it. And I think I've come out a little bit better because of it. And without it, I don't think I would be the person that I am today. You know, oh, yeah, so it's, yeah. But it's you hard. can't project that on everybody else, right? I mean, like, certainly there's, I've watched mm. people walk in the wrong direction. And it's like, oh, man, I mean, you know, I mean, I've, I've had my own experiences, of course, but just like observing, uh, you know, it, it's worth planning out uh, ahead of time if you can. You know, to make sure that uh, you know your your steps are in the uh, in the right direction. Because if uh, if they're not, then uh, yeah, you end up backtracking a lot. And, That's true. And again, I, I, like lessons learned. I can see your point, learned, right? Like 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 bad shit happens, and you get you you either can get over it or you don't get over it. Uh, but you know, the the way to get through is to get better. Uh, but again, that's it. That's I mean, that's why you have like the, you know the wise old people that are like you know don't do that, you know, and then the young kids that are like fuck it, I got you know plenty of energy and reckless abandon i'm gonna be dangerous as long as they're not like being dangerous towards the waterfall <laughs> just, yeah, I'm yeah. Once, uh, i once heard someone say if you're gonna fall fall forward yeah. you know we all make mistakes in life and we all have you know challenges that we face and we all we're we're all gonna fail at some point in time at some you know uh the question is are you going to pick yourself back up and keep moving forward? You know, uh, as someone else once put it, if you fall, uh, well, I already said, if you fall, fall forward. Sorry, I'm still waking up here. So It's all good. You're good. I think the point is still valid, though. Like, I think it's important to, to understand that, but it's all interpretive. You know what I mean? I think, and it, 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 Gabe is right. You know, it is good to set your intentions and things like that, and that, that creates a lot of positive energy and stuff like that for you too. Um, but it's okay to fail because when you're trying something new for the first time, you're not always going to succeed at it. You know what I mean? And that's part of the thing of it is that we're so afraid to fail that we don't even try it. So you might as well try it because failure is not really failing. It's just kind of learning as you go along. Boom. One thing I hate about but sports, the, sports teaches yeah. you how to lose or the issue. Yeah. 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 Kind of Failure exactly. is just learning what doesn't work. What was that? Failure is just learning what doesn't work. There you go. Learning what not to use again, right? That's right. There you go. Man, there's all kinds of nuggets today, dude. The world is round. The world is <laughs> round. What? Oh my God. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so confused. Is full of mind. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It's it probably is a little it. bit more or, or, uh, overly. I mean, it's not like a quite, it's not perfect sphere, of course. Actually, isn't that crazy? That's one of the things that satellites have an issue with is um, as, they're, as they're speeding around the earth wicked fast and have to adjust their uh, uh, time clocks according to the theory of special relativity because time is going differently for these satellites. The altitude uh, always, is always changing with the satellites. So for a satellite to kind of like know where it is uh, in relation to its like height is it's just always changing because there's mountain ranges and, and oceans and shit. So it's uh, uh, trying to figure out where a satellite is as it's spinning around is pretty fucking complicated. I don't know how I got on that. No, no, that's awesome that you brought that up because I was actually reading about that the other day. It's like they're talking about how time at the northern pole, you know, closer to like the hemisphere and stuff like that, it actually moves a little bit differently than it does for us, it's a little bit lower to the equator and everything like that too. So it's pretty incredible. And like as you enter into the atmosphere and into space and stuff like that, it does move differently. It's wild, dude. It's wild to think about that. It's like time travel. <laughs> it's like, you know, when there's New Year's in other countries before there is New Year's here. It's like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> Or even even on the Zoom call, you know what I mean. For some of us, what time is it where you're at, Medusa? Mm, too fucking early. <laughs> it that actually can't... reads that on your clock, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. I'm looking at my clock right now. Um, it's yeah. officially eight a.m. right now. Uh, when Jason... this class started, it was seven. Yeah, seven. Good God. That's not that big of a deal for me. I'm, I'm up at like 5.45 usually every day. 
because you're a psycho. I am. Careful, careful, <laughs> careful, careful. careful. Just because yeah. people have different, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, shit, my, my daughter knows exactly what, circadian rhythms. Just because people have different okay. circadian rhythms doesn't mean they're psycho. Yep. <laughs> Gabe, you can attest for that. Just means we'll win the war because we'll be up before. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. I always like the phrase up before you and up after you. Awesome. First of the party, last to leave. Yeah, boy. Were we talking about when I was younger or what? Because, geez. I I'm talking about life. <laughs> yeah. Show up early, leave yeah. late <clears throat> if possible. Yeah. So the other thing I was listening to this morning on a podcast was about how our eyes evolve, how the whites of our eyes evolved to express and communicate. What? So like we used to have, uh, you know, way back uh, uh, the, the eyes, the, the whites of the eyes would be different colors or dark or whatever. But because, uh, or, or what ended up happening is during, uh, it was one of those traits that like, uh, I, I, they call it like a, a trait that washes over the, the genetics or whatever. It's like, you know, there's, there's mutations that happen and then all of a sudden there'll be mutations that happen and then just spread across the population because they're so uh, effective, I guess. I don't, I'm not a fucking geologist or whatever. But anyways, point is the, uh, the whites of the eyes are, are, had evolved so that uh, we, could, we could communicate and express emotion with each other without uh, verbal, or with, with more nuance and uh, uh, silently. And I thought that was a, a pretty awesome, uh, you know, th thing to think about. And then also just in the context of art and like, you know, what you can express just with with eyes and, and with the whites of the eyes or where the pupils are looking. Or, and again, just how easy it is if it's just a little bit off, uh, you know, for people to look at eyes and, and see how fucked up they are. But anyways, brains vary in tune with eyes. Eyes are cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Unspoken, unspoken language. Yeah. Let's welcome Melissa. She's joining in and hopping on right now. Uh, hey, Melissa. Speaking of early in the morning, I was just saying that uh, the, the nine o'clock morning groups, Melissa would show up and it'd be fucking 6 a.m. for her. How are you? Hey, guys. I am, you actually get to see my face this morning. Uh, I am preparing for convention right now. Evergreen. Mm hmm. Awesome. I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. That's really cool that you're doing that. Um, so, what are you doing to prepare? Um, so, I have the shop loaded and all that stuff ready to go. Right now, I'm working on getting uh, my tattoo portfolio shortened edition into a digital photo frame. So, I'm okay. loading the files into that right now. Nice. So that's like a, a display that just kind of cascades through different um, frames. Literally. Like a, like a carousel frame. Yeah. Oh, cool. Going all techy. Nice. That's awesome. It makes it a little bit easier. Like, um, you know, you go to conventions now, nobody really has like portfolio books that much out anymore. It's usually some kind of laptop or some like a device like that, it makes it easy to see it right away. Uh, it yeah. keeps it a little bit cleaner too. You don't have to worry about people spilling stuff all over your books and stuff like that. Like, man, I've been at some conventions where somebody will spill a beer or a margarita or something like that all over your stuff. It's terrible. <laughs> I can't say that I've had that experience, but I will take your word for it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun because you just kind of look at them and you go, um, and they go, sorry, and then keep on walking away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. <laughs> you have a good one. And you're not even going to get tattooed by me either. So that's cool. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, tomorrow so you're getting ready I... for it. Uh -huh, go ahead. Tomorrow I've got uh, starts off with uh, two whole days of seminars. So today's my last day of prep. Nice. Who's what seminars are you taking? Um, so Ty McEwen's going to be there. Oh, um, oh my gosh. Uh, gotta look now. total, like my brain has been squirreling all week. <laughs> um, let me look it up real fast.
Almost there. <clears throat> uh, Daniel Roca, Mark Wade, and uh, Mark. Ty McEwen, and Autumn Hudson. Awesome. All Radical. phenomenal tattooers. So, yes. have, you, have you met any of these people in person yet, Melissa? Um, <clears throat> I have not. Um, like, so this is the convention that I normally would go to uh, pre-pandemic stuff. Um, so I know, like, quite a few of the artists, I'll actually be able to see them and stuff, which is awesome. Um, and then there's another course that I've been taking um, that I took earlier this year. And there's like 12 of us from that, from previous, the round that I was in, as well as the new round. Um, we're all going to meet up there, at least the ones of us that are at convention. Um, so nice. I'll actually have around like 20 different artists and people and contacts that I know there, which is, makes it way better. Yeah. Way better as far as just like uh, entertainment or like saying hello to people or comfort or like that. You can just things to do. Or what do you mean by way better? Way better in terms of like I've been, you know, on Zoom with these people for months, you know, but I've never actually mm -hmm. met them. Um, nice. It's just the networking, the comfort and that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to help a lot. You know, it's always better when you know someone where you're going. Yeah. It, it, may, it cuts down on that that discomfort or like that uh, I'm the new kid in class, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's funny because like I grew up moving around a lot, a lot, a lot. Like we'd be sometimes in some places for a couple weeks even, you know what I mean? So uh, I got pretty used to being the new kid in class and just kind of <laughs> sitting back for a second and then being like, what's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, so it's pretty funny that you said that because that was always me. The most uncomfortable part for me was always – the lunch the lunch room you know what i mean right. like the lunch room is always the worst because like where do i sit dude i mean i can sit with these people i have no idea who they are i can sit with these people over here on the left i have no idea who they are <laughs> so you just like <laughs> sit down and you go what's up guys i'm here how's it going yeah what am i going to talk to you about <laughs> yeah that was kind of fun at some of the um some of the uh groups that gabe had there for a little while what was that gabe um the ones in rockford and chicago and stuff like that the tattoo tours. Uh, well, we did uh, some reinventing. We did a reinventing live up in uh, in Rockford. Uh, it was like mm -hmm. a, a day of seminars, maybe. Is that what you're talking about? I think that's. I think that's what it was. Yeah, and um, it was really awesome because everybody kind of had to do that at lunch. Like we all took breaks for lunch and stuff like that, and everybody just sat down at a table and just like you, you thought everybody knew each other, but you come to find out that everybody was just still sitting there learning, learning who everybody was. So that was pretty awesome. <laughs> super fun but it's just the right environment you know what i mean like everybody is welcoming and stuff like that dude and it made it feel that much more comfortable even though i was up there by myself and stuff so that's not that yeah. big of a deal once you're in the right environment yeah that's the big thing like i've always loved this um particular convention because everybody is super humble and super welcoming um and it doesn't matter who you are yeah yep I have been working on this painting for the past couple of days and I think I finally got the right placement and size for this face and this other little kid's face that's going to be here. Pretty excited about it. I don't know if you guys can see it very well or not. Let me pull that in a little bit more real quick. Some of the detail. It's so hard to see some of the little nuanced shapes that are in here right now. Let me see if I can pull it up a little bit closer. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. Looks great. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're working on it slowly but surely. Like, I think I painted the same image a little bit ago. I had it on there the first day, but I think I didn't like the overall size to the, to, and the proportion to the face at the bottom. So there's still some things I have to do, some refining in here and there, like with the shape of the, the main face, the mouth and the nostrils and stuff like that, but just getting it kind of put in there in the, the right place and then I'll go in and finesse it a little bit more once the paint while the paint's still wet and then let it dry and then start doing some glazing which is going to be a lot of fun 
But yeah, Ricardo, thanks, when you're painting these things, do you solve all your problems on paper before you get to your painting or no? Um, I want to start doing that, but right now, no. Okay. Right now, I don't. I just, um, but I... Go ahead. I was just curious. Yeah. On your process. My process is, is a fleeting thought, like a moment, just kind of an idea popping in my head, and I just grab something as fast as I can to put it down as much information as I can while I'm doing it. Um, and that's why I've found uh, one of the, cl the class on Monday nights with Guy very interesting because you have to kind of be a little bit uh, more on your toes. And I think he's trying to help us develop that, like the, uh, the idea of a silhouetted shape being interesting first and foremost. You know what I mean? And like, I really focus on those simple shapes with anything that I'm doing first, like, you know, the, the ovalish shape of a head, for example, like where it's going to be in the canvas and, and, and regarding the overall composition in that, in that manner. Um, but I do implement now a little bit more procreate work, you know, as like, once I start getting it down, the simple shapes, I'll go in and kind of finesse a little bit more of the, um, a little bit more of the detail, what'll help make it look interesting, things like that. Um, I found that the uh, procreate app, helps out tremendously for that because it's really easy. It's not as messy and you can pretty much do it anywhere you want to. Um, and it's been awesome. You know, before I used to have to carry around a bag with like a, a, a separate bag of pencils and markers and stuff like that. And that's still fun to get your hands dirty, but man, the program that like when I first came out to see Jason, we were working on a back piece together and it was awesome to be able to work on it in the plane while I was going there and we were finishing up some details together on the shared procreate uh, folder, you know what I mean? So that helped out a lot. Yeah. Jason, what's your method for painting? Do you structure and solve your problems first or no? I'm neurotic about problem solving on paper first. <clears throat> um, I always like to go through and do like a whole bunch of little thumbnail sketches and then thumbnail sketches turn into bigger sketches to refine the process. And then that turns into bigger sketches to refine the process even more. Uh, so by the time I've got my composition down, I've got my elements down, I figured out, oh wait, this hand should be bigger or smaller. Um, I already know that, okay, well, here's what I need to do. You know, and by that time I sit down and start <laughs> painting, it's like every, all of the problems are figured out. Now it's just down to the execution. That allows me to focus more on the execution of whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's a tattoo, uh, painting, uh, colored pencil work, watercolors, oils, doesn't matter. You know, it allows me to strictly focus on the execution of that as opposed to going through and figuring out, okay, well, maybe I should make the face a little bit smaller and the hand a little bit bigger you know, that kind of stuff while I'm doing it, just because I'm, I've been working on over the past, I don't know how many years, just refining my technique um, with everything, as far as like paint application goes, uh, tattoo application. So I found that by eliminating all of the other things I have to think about, it allows me to sit back and strictly focus on one specific thing, namely application. Okay, cool. That, that's a perfect way to say that, Jason, because like it's, that eliminates a lot of roadblocks for you. And you're able to get the project uh, to a more complete stage a little bit quicker and with a little bit more confidence. And it really does, and it can show through in, in paintings and, and subjects and stuff like that too, you know what I mean? So that's awesome. That was per a perfect way to describe that. Now perfect there is way. a disadvantage. And it's, it's, there's a very big mm -hmm. disadvantage to that, and that's when you're focused so much on application and when you're focused on technical ability and technical application of whatever it is you're doing, you're no longer being that expressive with it, right? Where if you look at anything Ricardo has painted, even his Procreate stuff, you see a lot of expression. You see a lot of uh, brush strokes, a lot of movement. You see a lot of uh, very kind of gritty areas for lack of a better term. Um, and that in and of itself can lead to expressing more emotion and being a bit more expressive in what he does 
Whereas if you look at the things that I create, a lot of them are technically applied very well, but they lack that kind of emotional expression in the application. Gotcha. Yeah, one of the two of the artists that uh, I was really uh, excited to see or, or, or lucky to see work next to each other was uh, uh, Jeff Gogway and Nick Baxter. And like, I don't oh, think yeah. they could be possibly any different. Uh, you know, this was at one of the interstates, uh, one of uh, guys uh, art shows where, you know, there's probably like 40 or somebody, you know, <laughs> people there painting. <laughs> but anyways, point is, you know, uh, Nick was like there, you know, probably a half hour ahead of time to make sure that everything was, you know, scoped out, set up appropriately. He had his you know, his equipment set up and, and was ready to go and, and then started. And I, I, you don't have my visual, but he's like a very meticulous, like, you know, yeah, the, the stroke by stroke, line by line, everything's, I'm sure, is planned out. And, and I mean, you see his process, he, he lays it out in his books and shit. But, uh, and then, uh, you know, after uh, hanging out with him for whatever, on and off for a little bit, then all of a sudden, like, Jeff would show up, like, right next to him with this massive canvas and, like, just start painting shit and then, like, walk away and, you know, come back uh, another hour or two later and work on it a little bit more. And, and Nick is just sitting there still plugging away at it. And, uh, you know, they're both clearly amazing, you know, painters and artists, you know, uh, completely different styles. It was uh, uh, really fun to see them next to each other. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean, Gabe, because um, like what Jason was saying is that there's a very like flowed kind of feel. Like I, I took a seminar with Jeff uh, back in, I don't even remember, it was 2011 or 12 or something like that out in uh, Oregon. And um, first of all, being there and, and being around some of the people that were there, you know what I mean? Aaron Bell, and mm -hmm. guys like that. Uh, Damon Conklin was there, you know what I mean? Like awesome. to be in a room that intimate with these people, Mike DeVries is there, you know what I mean? It was just, oh man, it was incredible just for that alone. And then to have the other people that were there for the same goals, which is to learn to paint with this guy was just amazing. So, yeah, but you can definitely see that like, I think he worked on this huge canvas. It's like probably four feet, five feet wide. You know what I mean? And he just nailed this Hanya mask on it. Dude. And I was just like, man, what the hell, how the hell did you do that? You know, but you're right. Uh, I can definitely see the difference between the, or see the dynamic of having those two people working next to each other. That'd be pretty interesting to see for sure in person. Most definitely. Um, because you can tell exactly what you're saying. Like when you look at Nick Baxter's work, his paintings especially, they're very, very meticulous, very thought through, very um, detail oriented, you know what I mean? But it still creates a sense of atmosphere and stuff like that too. So it's pretty neat to see that. And just are very loose and, and fluid for sure. But still dynamic as well. Yeah, I mean, when people say that, uh, you know, uh, digital art can't have soul or whatever, uh, it's like, well, you know, I definitely can get the, the, the nuances and as the creators, but like, if you look at, uh, oh shit, what's that magazine? What's, what's the big, big sci-fi magazine? Josh, are you still here? You know it. Uh, uh, oh, what is it? The digital magazine. It's a book. It comes out every year. It's fucking got Spectrum? Insane. Yeah, look at Spectrum and Spectrum. be like, yeah, sure. Tell me there's no fucking soul in that digital art. Come on. <laughs> yeah dude no i love that book it's such a big collection of different var varieties of arts and artists man it's amazing uh but yeah i know exactly what you mean because i remember the first time i seen some of the digital paintings and just going wait wait no way that's digital dude no way that's digital you know what i mean it's amazing to see yeah it's incredible to see that was one of the the most interesting things this last year gabe was creating that that poster uh, for the BYOB, man. First of all, it's a huge honor to be able to do that. And then secondly, dude, just to like spend the time on it and be able to get the feel. It was awesome too, because I didn't listen to the directions. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. So I, I painted a city scene instead of like a mountain scene and stuff like that. So to be able to do it twice was even better. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes all, it's, uh, it's all my fault. <laughs> you know, it, it, when, when commissioning, uh, you know, po uh, artwork and stuff, it's definitely a, a good in a crazy trick or, or not trick but in between of uh you know wanting to give plenty of leeway you know but wanting to make sure that the poster attracts the people expecting the appropriate experience you know and uh and yeah that yeah. That, that would certainly have been an amazing poster to, to hit up at their boston you know gigs uh you know the rainy nights and shit it would be it was perfect but uh, but yeah jiminy peak is definitely uh you know nature it was awesome it was a cool poster 
it's uh it's Thanks, definitely huh? like i said though, it's always tricky trying to uh figure out how much to in interject uh opinions and directions and such but you did great i thought it was awesome mm -hmm. i thought it came out great Thank you, man. i appreciate it very much uh but yeah dude jimmy peak is definitely uh the opposite of a city environment for sure that place is amazing <laughs> yeah. dude <laughs> it was so cool super cool out there yeah we'll get back yeah. there someday but... yeah. yeah and that was the first time i ever rode one of those roller coaster rides too oh fuck dude those things are so cool man that was That's the, how we found the, the place. first time i ever did it is it really yeah, I was there with uh, my daughter, speaking of daughters. Uh, so, so Jiminy Peak is like this mountain resort in Western Massachusetts. Uh, it's the least densely populated town in Massachusetts. I think it was like, I don't know, whatever the population is, it's the least densely populated and it's not very many. And uh, I was looking for, tentatively looking for a spot to do a convention. I had talked to Derb months earlier and he had said that he would help uh, run a show. And I was like, oh, fuck, that means I have to run a show because because it's Derb and he said he'd help. That's like a, a, an amazing uh, opportunity that must be taken and, you know, and used. But on the other hand, I had to wait for the right spot. The spot in Northampton wasn't right. And uh, it was a couple months later, was, we went up to the slide, the, the Alpine slides. I love those. There's just both, Alp you should look them up, Alpine slides and Alpine roller coasters. And if you're anywhere yeah. near one, I'm sure they have them in Oregon. Uh, oh, they're amazing. Anyway, so when we were there, everyone was telling us, motorcycle convention that was there the weekend before and i was like you know i, I like my motorcycles and i love my you know, i love my motorcycles and i love my tattoos but i do kind of you know they, they've sometimes it's embarrassing to have them cross over and uh, or not yeah. it's like sometimes they don't you know the bikers don't necessarily value the tattoos and the tattoos don't value but whatever point is and there's plenty of in between point is i'm like uh, uh, okay, yeah I, I get you there's a lot of bikers that come here we're, I'm tat we're talking tattoos here uh not bikes and then after like the third or fourth time i was like well how many uh uh bikers were here and they were like a thousand i was like oh, oh we could put a thousand tattoo people here and if you don't mind bikers then you won't mind tattooers and uh yeah and that was literally going up the uh those thoughts were going up the uh the roller coaster one because i was strapped in that's awesome that's awesome man well yeah, we caught the last one that weekend too yeah when, when you rolled in or when, when when you pulled up it was like literally the perfect timing Yep. Yep. There's a video of uh, Carson Hill and Derb going down the uh, Alpine slide, racing down the Alpine slide for the very first year. So that was 2008. Wow. That was actually the, one of the, oh, speaking of fucking imposter syndrome and shit, right? So this is the, sec the second year of the tattoo show, the first year that I, that guy came to a show. Uh, throughout the course of you know and i was freaking out that year because like guy and bob was coming for the first time i think sean barber a lot of people came the second year that uh we were hoping to get the first year to teach and guys always been a you know guy and michelle have always you know been, been pivotal in, in tattoo education and whatnot but they didn't come to the first second year anyways so halfway through the event where you know the video guy was there and they're talking about interviewing guy and whatnot and guys are like well why don't you interview me and i'm like i'm not gonna interview you are you out of your fucking mind I've never done an interview before in my life. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. I'm not a tattooer. I'm fucking, you know, uh, but it was like, you know, he, he, he wasn't really going to say no. And I, like, I wasn't going to say no harder enough that he, he took it. So uh, we did an interview. I don't know where that footage is. That'd be, I don't know if it's anywhere. It might be with the crazy, uh, actually, I think that might've been the first flat earther I met. Um, or Alex Jones kind of uh, uh, <laughs> devotee, that, that, that video guy. So I don't know where that video is, but I did do it. And um, yeah, that was nuts. But, um, no, one, no one's ever, it, never, it doesn't ever get any more comfortable, I don't think, as you could tell from- hey, I, gotta, I gotta be honest, man. Like you do a really good job with interviewing people though. So how long, how long would you say that you were at that discomfort level where it's like, oh man, what the hell am I doing? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing this. And like, did it take a long time for you to find the right questions for people? Is it catered to- is it catered to the individual that you are interviewing? Like, how does that work? What's your process? I, I, I don't have enough time to prepare to interview people. So I have, I always feel dramatically underprepared and I'm always thinking about, uh, you know, the things that feel like I'm thinking about other things that, than I should be. Uh, or, or, or I, I feel like I'm spending more time trying to figure out what's coming next as opposed to uh, being completely in tune um, so I, I don't answer that is I still fucking I need to figure it out still I have no idea I uh, I gotcha uh, yeah no just 
the more you do it, the, the, the less the sound of your own voice. So, I mean, it still kind of annoys me, but it is literally how everyone else hears you. And you look just like everyone sees you, you know, so it's, you know, I don't know. You can't change it, so why not? <laughs> yeah. Yep. But Melissa, sir, I, have I to remember you. The, the more, sorry, just to wrap it up real quick. The more prepared you, 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 I am, or you are, or people are, then the better it always goes for sure. So, so like preparation right. and just kind of being in it, and then not freaking out. Like we've been really lucky in the last year that we're not freaking out 15 minutes before because tech is going bad. Uh, you know, having all that stuff like just work is is also uh, really good for your mind. You know, it's funny because as long as you don't have me doing the intros, we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, because the intros and me do not mix at all but um melissa to the point we were talking earlier with ali and we were saying like uh how beneficial just jumping into these things and then minimizing our discomfort level has been from the beginning to where we're at today right now at this moment like do you have anything to add to that like can you tell us how you feel about that and like what your experience has been with it so I've always been super shy. Um, and I still am. I still struggle with it. Uh, it's taken two, three years of Zoom calls and being on uh, videos. Um, it helps when I get to point it at my art versus myself. So today's a bit awkward. Um, but ultimately, you know, people are less in tune to picking up on what you're insecure about if you just move along and do what you're there to do. Um, you know, if you look more human to them, then they feel honestly less insecure as well. Uh, yeah. People don't typically pinpoint things unless they're wanting to bully you. And in which case, you know, you're not on the right platform, but, or you just deal with it and say, well, that's your opinion. But it's definitely something that you should jump into because if you are never challenging yourself in some form, in some capacity, you are never going to get over it. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on it. I like that. That's a pretty good way to look at it. Uh, and you touch on a couple of things that I, I relate to quite a bit with the, the insecurity things. You know what I mean? Like we all have them, which is I think you touched on that. And I think the more um, approachable you become it, because you kind of acknowledge it in a sense, you know, uh, and you're doing what it is that you're there to do. And you realize that everybody in the room probably feels the same way that you do to a certain point. And it definitely makes you more approachable. And I think we can all relate to that. You know, and I think that's what it is. It helps create like a good relationship with people and, and we never able to interpret what it is that we're there to do that goal oriented mind, you know, with all of us there, like, getting to know each other, becoming better artists and things like that. And I think the environment, like you touched on, has a lot to do with that for sure. You know, like yeah. this environment especially is so productive and so like accepting. And it's been amazing because I've been in other environments where it's just non-conducive at all. And it almost stunts you even, you know, it'll stunt you. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, you can go crawling back into the hole that you crawled out of in the wrong environment. Um, yes, exactly. <laughs> And it's yeah. devastating. You're just like, oh man, this is this is bad. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Okay, <laughs> this environment is bad. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, so, so, uh, I I'm gonna read off. Got some uh, uh, people in the chat room, or one of them at least. Uh, Marty says, "Morning, Fultz." Uh, Marty Bolliard, <laughs> uh, Vincent Vickers Jr. Missed you guys last night. Uh, been swamped with family stuff last several days. Hope to catch up uh, with you all next week. Love seeing the Monday night peeps joining here. Keep killing it, everybody. Everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hello, hello. Uh, it looks like we got Kyle in here today, too. Good morning, Kyle. Hey, what's up, Ricardo? How are you? Not too bad, man. How, how are you this morning? I'm okay. Another day. Good. All right. <laughs> Sometimes it goes like that, right? Yeah. Well, you're being productive. You're working on your project from last night. Yeah. Okay. Trying to, Can trying we to take work a look on at the that? anatomy a bit. Oh, nice. Let's see if we can. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it so we can see you on the screen here? 
Yeah. Um, well, I got to just, um, yeah, you know, you guys last night were talking about like vultures picking out <laughs> eyes or something. So I had this idea to just kind of like have this vulture picking out a cow's eye. Very cool. Yeah. Very vulture like, isn't it? What a vulture thing to do. Yeah. So I'm just working on the anatomy of the vulture for now before I jump into all the contrast and all that. Okay, cool. Are you using one frame of reference for it, one source of reference, or are you using the multiple images that were provided? Um, I've got I've got the images as well as I pulled up a couple other on the side. Okay. Yeah. That's cool, man. I like it. Yeah, you can already see that the the, uh, the main subject matter is going to be the focal point for sure, so that's good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, you can see where your midtones are starting to come into play for sure, so that's great. It's exactly what guy was asking for and then we just i guess just provide some like the, the lighter the lightest tones and you're set man great thank you yeah that's cool maybe with some of the clouds or something like that you know what i mean right kind of where i'm that's kind of where i'm trying to implement mine is in the clouds and i think i need something to come over the bottom part of my my branch that he's sitting on too um maybe i'll just tie like a cow skull to it or something yeah there you go yeah or like a do like a you know like the old what is it the the belt with the bullets in it or something like that oh yeah you know, classic that. yeah there you go right yeah well i think i'm getting to a happier place with the proportions on this it all set up. It's all going to be monochromatic. This painting is all going to be monochromatic. It's fairly monochromatic as I can, adding the, like the, the blue valley to it, the blue hue to it. Um, and I think I might provide that a little bit more with some of the glazing and things like that, and then clean up some of the lettering, the font. And I might distort it a little bit too. I'm not sure yet. Make it kind of curl over, curl over a little bit. But becoming a little bit more happy with this. But I still got to play with some of the proportions and the neck and stuff. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I have so many paintings started that I need to finish. Are you getting mad about that? Yeah, seriously. How, how how many paintings do you have going right now, Melissa? Because I have a few of them. Um, I think right now I have like four. Four of them? I've got four. five around me in my room. I had like <laughs> yeah. six. And... I one day I was like, nah, we gotta finish some of these guys because this is gonna drive me nuts. Uh, yep. Yeah, I lowered that number. <laughs> That's good. So you could check one off the list then, right? Exactly. Hey guys, <laughs> I gotta yeah. get running. I uh, just wanted okay, to man. say thank you for uh, having me on here today. Thanks for joining. Thank you for the insight, Jason. You're very welcome. Later, Jason. Hi, Bye guys. Easy boss. Such a cool dude. All right, so yeah, I got let's see, one, two, three, four of them right now. <laughs> I have this one. That's acrylic on canvas, and I keep right. playing around with the, the mouth. You know, what I mean, the mouth is just bugging me, dude. Like the way how far down it is from the nose and the jaw, the, the chin, and things like that. So I need to move some things around a little bit as far as the uh, the structure of the face and stuff. And let's see, so that's one, right? And here's another one. Oil on canvas. Uh, so I'm not done with this one. I'm not even sure if I like this one anymore. I might just paint over it. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I get to that point a lot. Add some background. Yeah, You'll be happier with it. There you go. And I got this little dude, a little Buddha bender. That I need to finish up. That's all. Yeah, thank you. That's oil on... Um, uh, somebody that I know printed off a 3D printing of a Buddha bender. I don't know if you guys watch Futurama or not, but you should check it out. It's a fucking great show. Amazing. Um, yeah. But this one's oil on Mason. On board and wood. And then this is the other one, too. This is an oil on canvas board. I dig and that. I got to finish this one, too. Thank you. I really like a little snake lady. Mm -hmm. I just... Yeah. So... Yeah, man. One of these days, right? Uh, yeah. One of these days. 
got a couple. Well, I've got that big creature one I'm still working on, and lady with a skull and some weird acrylic thing that I decided to play with. And then when I just started, I haven't actually put paint on it yet. <laughs> oh, hey, just to yes. chime in real quick, is anybody uh, download? Does anybody have a Roku? Downloaded the uh, app yet? I do not have a Roku. Yeah, no Roku. That's okay. Me neither. Yeah. That's okay. It's cool. You can buy Roku TVs with a lot of the app already in there. So like people yeah. that are buying the Roku. Fifteen percent like like install base or something, so it's like not like hmm. one of the biggest, but it's still a shit ton. But, That's cool. I yeah, just wonder. It's awesome, man. Did it take a while to work on that? Uh, yeah, all this stuff takes, but you you know how it is. It takes years to take months to take weeks. Yeah, you're like it'll be done in two weeks. Two months later, <laughs> it'll be done in two more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, with the, the computer stuff, it was this. Uh, some of it's at this point. I'm at the somewhat of the mercy, but also at the benefit of other developers. And uh, but no, yeah, it, 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 there's like two or three different good decisions that we made that uh, allowed this to actually be possible on the Roku, which is cool. Because uh, oh. if we had made some different ones, then there would be almost an insurmountable amount of work to uh, to do. But. Definitely cool, and it's also uh, definitely a good reminder to, uh, or for me on, on some of the other shows, always uh, show off more like tattoos. And, and again, you guys have artwork going on here, so that's easy. Uh, but like with the interview shows, it's always uh, now and now it's almost, uh, one more round of uh, encouragement for us to, uh, well, to to some, to your point, Ricardo, to like prepare ahead of time and uh, to to do more research and to have more videos and pictures, so we're not like just surfing Instagram and shit. Totally. Totally, totally, totally. Agree. Well, guys, I think it's about that time for me. Um, I was wondering if maybe we can go around the room and uh, everybody give us a little shout out about where you're at, uh, where we can get a hold of you and stuff like that. And um, I guess we can start with Ali, if that's okay with you. I'll just kind of go down the line here. Sure. My name is Ali Kriska, and you can find me at uh, on Instagram at Living Water Art Studio. And we're in central Alabama. Cool. Thanks for joining us, Ali. Appreciate having yeah, you on. Good. Um, Kyle? Yeah, I'm Kyle Bernstein, and you can find me on Instagram and all that at Skies of Fire Tattoo. Killer. Thanks for coming on this morning, man. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Yep. Uh, Melissa? So, my name is Melissa Sink. You can find me on Instagram at M-A-C underscore M-I-S-S-A. Um, my shop's located out in Staten, Oregon. Uh, this weekend, I will be out in Eugene at Evergreen. So if you're in that area, stop on in. There's a lot of phenomenal artists out there. Um, so yeah, that's how you can find me. Very cool. Thanks for, thanks for joining and uh, thanks for hanging out. That's been Good fun. luck this weekend. Yeah. Thanks. Cool, Gabe. Did you want to say anything, or just kind of? Uh, no, I'll just. Uh, if you want, I could. Uh, well, I could just wrap up. Am I, I guess I'm clicking the button now. I think I have the hosting. So I'm Gabe uh, Ripley. I work with uh, the guy on reinventing the tattoo and tattoo now. Uh, sometimes I'm in the background here, clicking the buttons, and yeah, I think we're, uh, this was a fun show. Thanks to everybody, and I'm going to click end. If everyone wants to look at the camera, wave goodbye, make a funny face. Uh,